to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, Chester Birchwood, who's the designer at New York Solar Systems, LLC. He's in the building for the next 30 minutes. So stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Chester Birchwood, who's the designer at New York Solar Systems, LLC. He's here to give us a great interview tonight, very informative, and tell us all about New York Solar Systems. So, Chester, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lydia. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you here on Beyond Focus. We always try to really bring different guests on board who are really going to share something informative with our, our viewers, our listeners, and, of course, you know, the environment. That's something that's yes. definitely a hot topic. Yes. So much is changing. It's 2016, we're going into 2017, and I think now is the time more than anything else. With so much going on that if we don't try to do our little part, and as cliche as it may sound, we all have to play a part and do little things that could help us. So let's dive straight into it. Tell us a little bit about New York Solar Systems. Well, thank you, Lydia. Uh, and New York Solar was started in September of 2008. The idea of starting New York Solar was to be able to bring alternative technologies to people that never was exposed to it, especially people in different urban settings. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we strive to do is to do a little bit of applied alternative energy technologies, right? Okay. We actually apply it. And we do a lot of cutting edge stuff, like for heating, for using solar for heating, use solar for cooling, we have a project. I have a project right now that um, the FDNY is evaluating, which they have on the, their training session at Randall's Island, and we're using solar to help with the cooling of one of one of the um, garages at, at the FDNY um, training school at, at Randall's Island. Apart from that, we have done stuff with solar cooling in um, one place in Kong Heights, not too far from here, mm -hmm. right? And overseas, we have done solar electric with battery backup, right, in Trinidad. So we are hoping to expand our, um, our ideas and our vision for having, using, using solar in every application, from hotels to homes to whatever, whatever we have to do. But we try to do it different from what most of the solar companies are doing. Because we're trying to include batteries, we're trying to use solar hot water, we're using um, different solar panels that they wouldn't use. So, and we have some here t tonight. So Chester, tell us a little bit about some of the benefits because a lot of people may not, I think it's just a lack of information. Mm -hmm. There isn't a lot that's readily available unless you're really going to go do a search mm -hmm. on your own. Mm -hmm. So really be that in the source of information for us tonight and really kind of bring us up to speed about why should we should choose solar. What are some of the benefits? Um, you hear about solar, solar powered cars mm -hmm. and all those different things and that's kind of on the fence but solar energy benefits why should we do it well one thing Lydia is that every time you get up in the morning and you see daylight to me that's energy it gives you energy the Sun gives you energy exactly right in the transfer of photons right from the from, from the Sun and comes hit your body or hit these panels and transfer them in, into heat or into electric right that is energy and for us right we have a resource that hit us every day and we don't maximize that resource and it's for free so it makes no sense for her for us to be walking around here paying Cornelius and all this money or in a developing country where they lack um, electrical services right to not to have some kind of power because without power right you can't get access to the internet Without mm. access to the internet, you can't gain knowledge, you know. So this is why, for me, solar is not only about just taking that free energy and converting it into something that you can use, but also it's an empowering thing for people who are, who are stuck, stuck in, in a point where they, they need access to more knowledge. And mm -hmm. solar can actually be that bridge, right, that could bring that closer. 
So this is how I this is how I see it with solar. Now the thing about it with solar, right? Um, I'll start with this <coughs> panel we have here. Sure. This is a regular solar panel that you're gonna see. Right? Okay. I mean, it's scaled down, of course, right? So this but is a basic solar panel. Yes. Well, there's no such thing as a basic solar panel. There are different okay. types, but okay. But this one is solar electric panel. Okay. Right. While this one is solar hot water panel, but I will get the differences later on. But what happens is that when the light, even the studio light, if I had um, my multimeter, right, and I could and I put power to this, I, sorry, excuse me, and I measure the power that's coming from this panel, even with these lights, what it, what it will show you that it has converted this light energy into electric power. Hmm. If I put the multimeter to this. So the greatest thing about it is that just think of it as sunlight hitting this and this converts it into power. And you can use this power to do many things. You could use power to actually run a car, electric car, or electric car. Or you can use a power for lights in the home, radios, whatever the, whatever the ones are electric power. Right? And some of the stuff that I've designed in Trinidad is that we use electric, sorry, we use the solar, excuse me, we use the solar to run electric stoves. So mm -hmm. it's limitless to what you can do. I mean, of course, the initial cost for buying it like that in a um, developing country, it's a, little, it's a little high, which is true. But think about it. You pay for it up front, and practically for the next 20, 30 years, because these things, when they're made properly, you have a shelf life of 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. right? You have free power to do what you have to do. You know, go on the internet, seek more knowledge, get more light, in the place, you know, whatever you want to do it, you know, it's a, like I said, it's an empowering thing to me. This is how I look at it. So what happens now when there's bad weather, there's tornadoes? Good question. Especially if you're talking about Caribbean islands, you know, sure. rainstorms. Okay, so there may be frequent periods of clouds. Mm -hmm. so the sun may not be out, but it doesn't mean there's no energy. Good point. Very good point, Lydia. One of the things that's, that the real solar really works is that... Um, it's not only for using it in bright sunlight. Even when you have low sunlight in the Caribbean, one great thing about, about that region, in the Caribbean, Central and South America, is that the ultraviolet light mm -hmm. has a lot of photons and that can actually activate that. One of the amazing things that I have experienced in the Caribbean is that even when there's a rainstorm, we have seen the panels actually um, push out about 70% of its energy. Even in a rainstorm, you'd be surprised because even after the rain, the sun comes out, right? And even during the rain, the sun comes out. Now, don't get me wrong, right? With inclement weather, yes, which is true. It does limit it, which is true. Right? And that goes out when we, we lose power here. Exactly, too. right? Condensation goes out sometimes. So with this now, right? But even when it's cloudy, it still accepts the power, but it, it may not operate at 100%. It may operate at 40% or 50% or even as low as 30%. It depends. But at least you have some kind of power that you can use to charge the batteries and then from the batteries you transfer it into the electric grid within the home. Alright. So that's a lot of great stuff and I can't wait until we're gonna take a quick break, but in the next segment we'll go into this bad boy right here and get some other information. I've got Chester Birchwood right here sitting with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel sitting here with Chester Birchwood of New York Solar Systems. So Chester, you know, yes. great first segment. You really shared some great information about what it is, kind of the pros, but why should we, we should all get involved with this. Take about a minute here to just talk about New York City. Cosmopolitan, major, most people own. A lot of people own, a lot of people rent. Uh, sure. It's popular thing to do condos, co-ops. Who's limited and who can get involved and who can't get involved? Well, I've always believed that everybody could get involved. 
it doesn't matter. Even if you just do a small little project, right, as a renter, right, you can still get involved. Right. As long as you have access to s direct sunlight that comes into your apartment, you, you could do small stuff with it. Like, for example, you could even use something else, this, this type of panel, to even um, run your laptop. Hmm. So that would take away then, if let's say I were to invest in one of these to run my, some of my smaller appliances, mm -hmm. would that ultimately lower my Con Ed bill because I'm no longer using that as yes, a power source? Yes, it will lower your Con Edison bill. But you have to use a panel and a battery system because whatever you don't use during the day, you want to store it up so you can use it at night. Mm -hmm. So that is the trick behind it. Now, what happens now is that um, Con Edison, before with some of the solar panels, Con Edison would allow you to basically just feed them the excess power during the day with the larger solar panels, solar electric panels. Mm -hmm. What is happening now, I think Con Edison has a mandate that in certain areas, and I think this is the area of Kong Heights is part of that area, where they allow you to put the solar panels with the batteries because Con Edison have an issue where they don't have enough to see the power in certain areas. So they want people to have solar panels, right, to use storage batteries, to be able to use at night so it could stop them from using Con Edison power. You know, so they can send the power somewhere else. That's kind of interesting when you think about it. You know, so that's what I was going on right now. So, you know, it all, it all depends. But everybody can get involved. I mean, right now, the way how solar is marketed, it's marketed to mostly condo owners, mm -hmm. um, co-ops, and, and homeowners, right? And, of course, building owners themselves. And to me, okay, that's one aspect of the market, right? And apparently it works well now. Because all they're doing is just offsetting the amount of power that they normally buy from Con Edison, and they have the panels doing it, and the excess power goes back to Con Edison, which Con Edison buys. Now, for small homeowners, sorry, excuse me, for, sm for renters, right, you can do small projects. You don't have to spend that money and just say, okay, you know what, I'm at loss and I can't do anything. No, you can get involved. Mm -hmm. As long as you have access to direct sunlight, you can do small projects. You can, go, you can go on YouTube. There's so much projects that you can do. Right, to offset, like I said before, your laptop, um, a little fan, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, right? It's there. That's very, very interesting. Um, so let's talk about your role. I know you are the designer, <laughs> so you actually do a lot of the design work for yeah, this. So yes, I do. Where do these ideas come from? How do you really get the vision for creating these pieces? If I, here's the interesting thing. One of the things I love to do is to go on long walks, hmm. right? That's my thing. And... When I go on long walks, sometimes I look at the way how people interact with each other, I look at um, the way how people use energy. And for me personally, what happens is I'm inspired by looking at people or even reading about an event where in a developing country, they may not have enough you know, power to, to be distributed elsewhere. Like for example, um, like Liberia. Before the issue they had, right, with that virus that destroyed them, that almost destroyed them, I had a proposal to go into Liberia and the buildings that didn't have power was to, use, was to put power in there using solar. So at night, so at night, women and children, especially women, can go in there and have classes. Uh, where is that? Ex um, adult um, education classes mm -hmm. or, or classes um, for, to stop violence against women or whatever the case may be because Liberia in particular they had a 10 year civil war and everything got destroyed and what happened was that the rights of women right, got kind of curtailed within the country even though the, the, prime, sorry, the president was a woman right? but after 10 years of war there, there was so much little gender conflicts that was going on that one of the things that we are trying to do, well, my, myself and a, and a group of us, was trying to use these unused buildings that had no power and use it as a more, more like a multi-educational facility, right? So during the day, the kids go to school 9 to 3 because after 3 o'clock, they normally go home and they don't use the building for anything else because it's dark. There's no right. lights and there's no electric, right? So we are trying to bring solar power to do that. But unfortunately, that virus came and it created problems. So I couldn't.